place as the Mighty, mighty to bring our God, an awesome God. The songwriter said, Our God is an awesome God. Oh, yeah. He reigns yeah. in heaven and above. With his power and love, our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. We just come to pray to him. Good to see all of your faces. And we see. Visitors now, <laughs> but we say, God, Robin, and, uh, our God is blessed and join us today. And we just, uh, we miss you getting here, too. <laughs> it's been a long time, but we miss you. And we just, we just, we, we're just good. Isn't God there? We, we can just count our blessings and we see uh, how everybody looks. Good and t shirts on. Hallelujah. My aunt said, You want a church something like this? <laughs> 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 Hallelujah. But I can praise God whenever I have one. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I will yeah. praise the Lord as long yeah. as I live. Yeah. Hallelujah. While I have breath in my mouth, yeah. I will praise the Lord. I'm going to ask, um, do we have a volunteer who would like to share the scripture with us? Share the scripture with us? If you do, if you have one, lift your hand up. I'll give you a minute to find it. Or I will pick someone. And I'm going to ask Sister Lauren. <laughs> Get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God because he's an awesome God and his word is good, 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 good. And that's why we recite it, we read it, we study it. And so I'll put a plug in for our Wednesday night. If you haven't been studying with us in the book of Acts, you have missed it. Please join us on the PowerPoint. We will give you the information of how you can get us online if you don't know it. But it's just really good, and we just invite you to join us. Uh, and we also invite you that this Saturday will be a prayer retreat for the uh, women of the Church of God. And it's $20, it's coming on breakfast and lunch. And so ask all who can to join if you have a plan to. Write it on your calendar so you can uh, you can be here. Um, it's for the women, but we may we may let a couple of strangers in. There. <laughs> it's, it's just smile at them, maybe wink at them. They might let them in. Uh, but we just praise God that He is good. He's good. This is tomorrow. We'll join us. Thank you. So, I'll be reading Psalm and I'm going to read Psalms 100. I think this is. Oh. 
technology. Shout okay. with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him, sing with joy, acknowledgement. Acknowledge the Lord. Is that he made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture, and in his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, praise his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. May God add a blessing for me and the church. God. Sometimes we, we miss our people by here. We're good for the land. We can uh, have a paper Bible or we can have electronic. We can still get the word. Amen. And that's, that's a blessing. And uh, we are here to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And um, the Lord is good and worthy of our praise. Yes. Yes. And I, uh, I, when I left here last Sunday, I didn't realize I would be in such a, a warfare. But I praise God that I had a, a different experience. On Wednesday, I was half sleep, so I, <laughs> I was excited and I could have been. But God did a wonderful thing for me on Sunday evening. And he let me see how he can change the tide of people's lives. And, and he let me know how important prayer is. It's important to pray for people. And it's, it's important to lift them up, you know, not only at our prayer time and um, Sister Jackie has been stressing when we get a name, we ought to be praying for them all the time and not just on Sunday. Uh, but it's important we don't know what they're going through at that very minute. I had a chance to call one of my cousins, and when I called her, she was in the midst of tears. Her, her, her sister had died a, a couple of weeks ago, and her mother's birthday, and the Lord had just put it on my heart to call her right then. I didn't know why. I didn't know that she was in such a state. But, you know, it, it's good to be able to hear from God and then do what he says to do. Because yeah. sometimes we get those little urges to do things that we, we don't take it as being God trying to nudge us into action. But when God puts somebody on your mind, I'm going to pray for you. Um, be in a state of prayer that we are always in this with people up because you don't always know what people are going through. But you can be sure everybody at some time is going through something. <laughs> if they're alive, something that they're going through. And if nothing else, we want God to have his way with our family, with our friends, our church family. We want them to, we want God to open the eyes of their heart so they can see no more to him. Uh, it's easy to look at the physical needs that people have there plenty, but people need people need the Lord and they need the Lord to, to touch them. And, and even those who have been saved a long time, there are some days where you just need God to hold you up. And, um, and so you don't know what it means that you are lifting different people up in prayer and that you are asking God to be with them. And so as we continue to lift up, up in prayer, and I'll ask does anyone have a, a special request? Would like to share with the congregation on the special night here. Austin. Ruth Austin went home to the Lord yesterday. Sister 
the man's not correct name. But I said, Lord, I'm glad you know who he is, and you know. <laughs> and so, um, so we just thank God. We are believing that God is moving on the people that we're praying. Do you believe it? It's not even a prayer if you don't believe it. And I hope you are, I hope your ears and your spiritual eyes are perked up that you can even see some of the changes that God is making in this and that person. And how God is moving. Please don't don't be like I was when my father, when I asked did anybody want to accept the Lord, it was my father. And he raised his hand. I said, maybe he didn't know what I what I meant. <laughs> and I had to ask again, if anybody wants to accept the Lord, come up. And my father came up. So don't be like me. <laughs> Be expecting God to move. <laughs> Be expecting God to move. Um, and I will praise Him for coming to give us this selection. Help us enter into the kingdom of God.
comfort them as they remember their loved one, Ruth Paulson, and the life that she, the life that she lived for you. Give them peace, Lord God. Give them rest, Lord God. Give them solace in your word. For we know that your word is true. God. We thank you for it. We ask the blessing, Lord God, this morning over our High Street family. The entire High Street family, Lord God. A special blessing over your protection over their homes. Uh, over their houses, over the mechanical, the electrical, the plumbing, and everything else that's going on in their homes right now, Lord. We ask for provision. We know what was spoken, Lord God, but there are other things that's going on in the members' homes, Lord, that they may not have spoken for different reasons. So we thank you, Father, that we can come to you, trust in you, Lord God, and recognize that it's for you and your glory that we ask. So when you uh, provide for us, Lord, we'll give you the glory. So use each and every one of these situations, Lord God, that when we ask and you make a way for us, when it seems that there is no way, once again, we know, Lord, that it was only you. It was only you, Lord. So we thank you ahead of time. We praise you right now, Lord, for the things that you're repairing, for the provisions that's being made right now, while yet they have not manifested we're praising you for knowing that uh, that you can. Yeah. That's right, Father. We, we magnify your name knowing that it is done. We thank you for it. We say hallelujah to your name. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Lord God, also for the brothers that came this morning, Lord, in the street asking for prayer, Brother Mars, Brother Rashad, Brother Roman, and Brother Malik. And they knew what we were out there in. They heard the voice. And they came and asked for prayer, asked for cover. But we're praying and putting them before you. Have your way in their life, Father. Have your way in their life. We trust you, Lord. We know that it was a reason that they were walking up and down the street at that given moment. And when they heard the invitation, they said, Yes, and they came, Lord God. So bless them. As we ask that you bless each and every member present. Not only the ones, Lord God, who have homes in the problems, but we have uh, two of our youngsters and two, four of our youngsters here uh, who just started school, Lord God. We want to raise them up before you. Yes. We want to raise them up before you. Father, we want a, a hedge of protection around them. Them and their classmates, Lord God. And we rebuke anything that's planning to come against them in the name of Jesus. Cover them, Lord. And we thank you for each and every one of them for, for reminding them that they are yours and they are covered. And perfect love casts out fear. So we thank you for your perfect love, Lord God. Cover the parents. We remember the prayer that uh, Brother Cornelius had set up last week. We, are, we still get in agreement on that prayer, Father. We thank you for covering the children, covering the parents. Each and every home, Father, cover the teachers and the entire system, the school system, Lord God, as they teach our children. We thank you for that. Another special blessing, Lord, over this message that we're going to hear today. Father, we come to worship. So we ask a blessing, Lord, over your word that comes forth this morning. That we not just be hearers of your word. Do us, Lord. Use us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
towards something in our lives. He said, look for his divine intervention. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget that we give him praise. He doesn't, you know, he he said we are good because he created us, but when we voluntarily give praise to the Lord, or even if it's not voluntary, because he just had a, loved us so much and brought us through our trials and tribulations, sometimes we just beat up. But when we praise him with our whole heart, he is moved, that is moving in his spirit. My dear sister, my brother walking around and praising, and my sister coming up here praising, and my sister back in, and, and our Reverend Fool, and different ones. Let me tell you so That was a, and Brother Lawrence, that was a manifestation of what the Spirit is going to do with us. We've got to give him praise, not because things are going rosy. And when it was my sister when she preached, she said, he said to the Israelites and, and the Canaanites and all of them that was coming against them, he said, for my name, I will do this. I will bring them, I will be the God of the mountain, and I will be the God of the valley. I will be everything they need. Seven groups of people. I was reading where the Lord eliminated them out of the for the Israelites to take their peace. You hear me? So God's going to look in and thank him on Jesus Christ because he's moving by his spirit. This song I'm going to sing, I thank you for your patience. The Lord is here this morning. He's here all the time, but we went a little deep. Um, I was praying. I, I heard this song in my spirit about a few weeks ago. And little did I know when I was looking the words of the spirit said, and the song was And I was trying to find the, the music and everything past the But the spirit told me about midnight. He said, You've done enough. You can't do anymore. Just trust me and go to bed. <laughs> That's the day we find with this song. And I give God a Let's give our pastor an applause for Thank you. 
Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise. So some of you think that we need to put on t-shirts that say, oh, Praise the Lord, not. <laughs> some people think it's sacrilegious to take communion if you wear a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to break some of those rules today. Because God says, let a man examine his heart. Not his attire, not his t shirt, or lack thereof. So, folks, let's put away the church stuff and hang around with all the Holy Spirit stuff. Because God is watching you. Amen? Amen. And we say God is watching you from a distance, but I tell you, He's watching you from right behind you. He's not that far away. He's not. He's not in the distance. He's right next to you. But he's watching you and walking with you. Uh, just want to bring you greetings. Um, it's, it's a joy to be in your presence. It's a joy to be able to be with you. I know that some of you, and I try to remember this, uh, some of you are joining us um, via our Zoom. And so those of you who are here with the Zoom link, uh, welcome to High Street. I hope that you've enjoyed yourself so far in the presence of the Lord. I know the Holy Spirit is able to, to get to you wherever you are. So uh, some people might be as far as Ohio or Kentucky or wherever you are. Who knows? Maybe Barbados. And, um, but wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is. So may the Lord bless you. Uh, also great to see Sister Coleman with us again. Now, I know one of the 
that, that Philip was saying, yeah, you said all that good stuff, Lord, but let's show us the power. And Jesus said, come on, Philip. I've been with you such a long time, and you've still got the nerve to ask me to show you the Father. Anyone in verse 9 who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you tell me? How can you ask me to show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. So we have to believe in this premise. And the one verse that I want to call you to, verse 12, verily, truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I'm going to the Father. And you know, further on, he promises us that if I go to the Father, I will send you the Spirit. So that, that we will see the fullness of the Godhead. So that everything that Jesus has said was really the word of the Father. And everything that the Holy Spirit reminds us is about what Jesus told us and taught us. And so we can do as great or greater things than Jesus has done. Do you believe that? Oh, yeah, you say yes, but do you really believe that? Because I'm hoping that we will see some of these signs and wonders. We've seen them. I don't, I, I, I got to take back that I'm not hoping. I hope that we will acknowledge what we've seen because we've seen signs and wonders. I, as, as I was preparing and the Lord brought some words to me, I remember some of the miracles that we have here. So today, I, I was hoping to wear a different shirt. Uh, Sister, Sister Davis gave me a shirt for my, either my birthday or my anniversary and said pastor has a lot of definitions of what a pastor is. And I hid it so safely away that I can't find it. <laughs> so I, I, I searched all yesterday and searched and searched and searched and I couldn't find it. Uh, so, I'm sorry, but Jean is wearing her, Jean is wearing her pastor's wife shirt. But as I was looking for this specific shirt, I came across this one that I haven't worn in, it's done in 2006, so I probably wore it once since then. Uh, I can see it fits me a little tighter than it did in 2006. But it still gets on, so hey, hallelujah. But what was really important to me that while I was here, here in, in Isti 2006, I was in Anderson, Indiana. And I don't know if you, if I doubt that that has a lot of meaning to you, but it has a lot of meaning to me because I got a phone call from Brother Delano Sheen. Telling me that his grandmother was found unresponsive. And he declared how she was given up by the doctor, who said, just get the family together, call everybody, because that's it. You know, the doctor said, we can't do another thing for our dear sister Virginia Washington. And right there in the midst of Isti, having heard a word in the service, the Holy Spirit is so awesome. The word of God is coming forth while I'm in the service. I get this call, I leave the service, and the word of God says that we, we, we can't accept this. The Spirit of God says, absolutely not. And I don't know the exact words I said to Brother Delano, but words to the effect that this is not unto death. Word to the fact that the Lord will raise up your grandmother. And I had no way of proving that. 
I just have to believe that if God has put it in my spirit, if you are in touch with the Holy Spirit, He will give you some revelation, knowledge, and words will leave your mouth. And by the time they leave your mouth, they because I didn't prepare for this, I didn't know the call was coming, and I didn't know that my response was going to be she will it. But that that's the way how the spirit was working at the moment. And we had prayer, and I traveled all the way back to Philadelphia. And I want you to know that Mother Washington did not die in 2006, in seven, eight, nine, ten.
But spiritually blind means you are in sin. You are not seeing. You need sight. You need to see Jesus. You need to see heaven. You need to see who God is so that when he takes those scales from your eyes spiritually, then you'll be open. Paul experienced this because Paul became physically blinded because he was already spiritually blind. And the Lord had to go take him through a process of scales coming away from his eyes. And as the scales, as we go back to Acts chapter 9, as the scales of the, as Ananias led him through this process, and Barnabas went and brought him into the church, he, he the scales that were removed from his eyes also revealed the truth of who God was. So God, did, God has a way of doing some miraculous things in, in the midst of how he deals with us. That's why Paul can say he is an apostle. He's not one of the original 12. He's number 13. But he's happy to be an apostle. Paul continued his whole career to say, I'm a, an apostle of God. He talks about God that he was there with his 12. Because God revealed himself to him. He actually said, I saw Jesus. Though Jesus was already dead for most of these people, but Paul saw him. Because Paul said, what am I to do with thee? As the voice came and said, why are you bothering my people? Paul got his revelation knowledge. As he was transferred from being blind through sin to having light and life through Christ. And though, so he could say, Now I am. Now I am blessed. Now I am fortified. Now I can see. Now you can take me to all the people and I could tell them that this Jesus that you crucified, and he should say, This Jesus. That I crucified because he was willing to crucify him too. If he was, if he was there, he would have been in the crowd crucifying Jesus. Because when Stephen was stoned, who was holding the clothes of those who were stoning Stephen? So Saul. But he has been redeemed since there's nobody so lost that they can't be saved. I know most of you don't pray for former President Trump like I do. Because I know you just want him to be dead, in prison, some bad thing to happen to him. But I want God, I want the Holy Spirit to save that man. Because that man is so sinful. But what a testimony it will be. If the Lord saved this man, and the next time you hear the nonsense come out of his mouth, it would change your mind because it wasn't nonsense anymore. He'd be speaking about the real God who transformed him, who saved him, and who will keep him. He would be telling people to love each other. He would be saying, Those of you who've got hatred in your heart, you need to get rid of the hatred because there's a God who wants to give you love. And who wants all of America to be great again? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you don't believe me. I know you think that I'm just crazy. But I, I the Holy Spirit has arrested me. I will not wish any evil to come to this man. I want this man's soul to be saved. Because God has put us on earth that we should go and preach the gospel to everyone. I just would love them to give me a chance to, to meet him for five minutes. Because he would he, he would he would be a changed man after I left. Amen. I guarantee you. Amen. So you can you know how to pray with me when you get a chance. God wants to change us into who he has called us to be and not who we are. Don't forget, says. Before you cast the first stone, look at yourself. We were all once in sin. We were all heading to hell because the wages of sin 
is death, but I see to God there's no period after death in Romans 3.23. The wages of sin, Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life. I hope you are ready to receive the gift of God today because the Holy Spirit is ready to give us the gift and to give us gifts so that he can be blessed and we can bring others to a slave the knowledge of who Christ is. So this man is lame and, and the description of this man is that he has been that way from birth. I, I had an uncle who was who became wheelchair bound? He he could walk, but if he did walk, you will wish that you had a wheelchair to put him in rather than see him suffer walking, because the way how his back was twisted and how his leg was, anytime he walked, you would have mercy on him. Now, as a young man, he fell from a tree and broke his back. That's why he got that way. So he wasn't from birth. But I can tell you that when a person has been living for a long time, especially like the feet you have the life, like yours and I, you can just look at the feet and you can see that there's something wrong with those feet. This man was lame from birth which means his feet never grew in proportion to his body. And his feet never showed signs of strength, ever. But lameness in the word is a sign of bondage. See, when you're lame, you're under the bondage of the inability to move. You can't move on your own. People will have to lift him and carry him wherever he was going. They, many of us are lame. We are under the bondage of all the horrors of this life. Some of us are under the bondage of sin, but some of us are accepted the freedom that God has given us. And the, the word of God says, who the son has set free, it's free indeed, but some of us aren't living in the freedom that we have. Some of us are still in bondage of thinking too small. Bondage of, of accepting that we can't. When there's a Philippian scripture that says, four and 90, I can do all things. I can. But we believe when we live in the I can't life. And we got to move out of the I can to the I can. You and I can do all things. Not in our strength, but we can do it in the strength of the Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. He gives us strength. So this man is lame. But I want to point out another L word in this scripture. In this one verse that the Lord has blessed us. Because in this verse, in verse 9 actually, Paul looks directly at him and saw that he had faith to be healed. Paul looks directly at him. Saints, so many of us are like the priest and the Levi. We walk by the lane, but we're in a hurry to get to church. So we're in such a hurry to get to church that we cross the street. We don't even go by it. Or we walk by it and then we cross. But it was the Samaritan who stopped. Since we have to be led by the Spirit so that we can listen to the cries of our neighbors, of our family members, of the people that we come in contact. We, some of them are crying out to us, but we interpret some of these cries because they sound like they're making fun of you or they sound like they don't want to accept Christ or they sound like, like they're jeering people who are saved. And, and we think that that's just wicked, but listen to them. 
It says that, that, that Paul listened to him. He looked at him. And the Holy Spirit gave him some revelation knowledge. A knowledge that said to him, I want to walk. Now, the reason why this young man was looking that way is because the Bible says this young man listened to Paul. And listening is not hearing. Listening has to be active. You have to have an intention on responding in some way to what you hear. If all you do is to let it go in one ear, then it might not even make it to the next ear. Or if it does, it just goes right back up. Just yesterday, Jesus says, come to me. He says, you're not listening to me. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm listening. I'm watching the show. I wasn't paying attention at all. <laughs> I was hoping that my eyes would be focused on this show and I could see what's going on. And yeah, uh -huh. I got you. <laughs> I was guilty. I wasn't listening. I barely heard what she said. Since we got to start to listen. See, what? the reason why we don't listen is because we are focusing on something else. Maybe we're focusing on where we are going, but we got to be in a place where the Holy Spirit can say, yeah, you're going that way. That's all right, but I want you to take a detour right now. You know, I want you to turn right. I know you know the shortcut is going straight, but I want you to turn right. I want you to go all the way around. Remember in John chapter 4, I always to get these scriptures messed up. I got to go and look them up again. I didn't write that one down, but the, the point is Jesus says, I must be so through to me. That was not the conventional way of travel. But the Holy Spirit said to Jesus, you need to go through Samaria. Because I have a work for you to do in Samaria. Sometimes we are heading to High Street, maybe, but we got to go around Germantown. Or we got to go around this place. Whatever it is, say, let the Holy Spirit lead you. So the Holy Spirit led Paul to look on this man and to, to, to see that this man wanted to be healed. And then came this, these words that are so powerful to me today. That Paul didn't ask him, what do you want me to do? Paul didn't say, you know, how can I help you? Paul says, stand up on your feet. We gotta lift people up out of their depression. We gotta lift people up out of their poverty. We gotta lift people up out of all the bondage that's holding them down. And yeah, I'm not talking about the social programs that are out there. They're fine. If you know of them, you can help somebody get them that help. But I'm talking about being freed through the power of the Holy Spirit so that you can then through that same Holy Spirit, be lifted out of your bondage. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. We've got to know that we've got some power going on in us. We've got the power of the Holy Spirit in us. And we have to give that power to people to lift them out of their bondage so that they can be set upon a straight and narrow way, so they can be set upon a rock, then they can walk in the authority that God has given them. Don't just keep it to yourselves. Don't just be saved and say, hey, I got my salvation. I'm going to heaven. That's being selfish. God didn't save anybody to take them to heaven. Get, going to heaven is there for you because you got saved, but God has saved you to take you to heaven. He said, I saved you so that you will share my word, so that you will go into all the world and preach the gospel to men, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God has given us a great commandment that we've got to go. And we've got to tell the world about this great Savior that we have. But if God wants to save you to take you to heaven, as soon as you get saved, you will go to heaven. We would just be disappearing. You get saved, you're gone. 
But God knows that all of you about saved, none of you are ready for heaven anyway. Including myself, so, you know, I'm not passing the judgment on you. But if good old sins is the thing, I'm heaven bound. I'm bound for glory and I cannot wait. Ah. Shouting, huh? Oh, the, the, the modern things don't think those down. Mm -mm. We don't think no bound for glory and we have no bound stuff. We, we, we can't wait to get a new Mercedes and a BMW, you know. We're saved so that we can walk in this greatness of, of being uh, blessed and prosperous. And I don't cry down anyone because let me tell you, I love BMW. I don't own one, probably will never own one, but I love it. Because if Jessica, I can switch teams with you any day. I'll give up my Toyota for your BMW right now. I have nothing against the blessings that God puts upon his people. If God has blessed you, please walk in the authority that he's given you with those blessings. But understand that it's the Lord that gave it. I remember Sister Murkison, I gave her a ride home a few times and she told me, oh, you are so nice. This certain person, I'm not going to tell you her name because you might run into her. But you could stand on her running boards to get in her car. <laughs> It says they don't want anybody to stop up those boards. They want my those are not for second on. <clears throat> those are those are just to be looking good. So you gotta this old saying gotta find a way to get them into this car without touching the running board. See that's when the, the Lord has blessed you to have such a nice vehicle so that nobody can stop up your running board. That's, that's not the reason that God blessed you. He blessed you with a vehicle so that you can give someone a ride. And if you don't want them to run and they're running for it, then you get up there and lift them. But many of us take the blessings of the Lord and we just feel like, hey, we are blessed and prosperous. And, and that's good. But it's not enough. God has saved you to show you off that you're blessed and prosperous. We are all saved so that we can go and make this happen. I want to encourage you, saints, though, to be ready for what the Lord has in store for us. High Street, I believe that God has got miracles in store for us. I believe that God has got healings in store for us, deliverance in store for us, freedom from bondage in store for us. I, I believe that God has got Freedom from the bondage of debt in store for us. You know, that's the problem. A lot of us follow the world. I remember so vividly that I once was in, was in the supermarket. My kids were very young. I'm not even sure if Michael was born yet. I know that this person, this image was Ryan. That yeah, he, Michael couldn't have been born because Ryan was in the car. Sitting in the car, you know, we put him around. And I go to, to buy something and I looked at the price and I said, no. And he said to me, why are you not buying it, Dad? I said, I can't afford it. He said, but you got that car. How do you know about a car? See, because he saw on TV that all you got to do is to swipe the car. And says, you know, the, the, the army says you owe it to yourself or Says, you, know, you owe it to yourself. Get into debt. You owe it to yourself. You know, the Bible says you don't, don't get into debt because you're going to become a slave to the one who <laughs> owns that debt. But we we we'd rather listen to the commercials that we see. You know, we, we we want to get up there and get get ahead. But I believe God has got a freedom for us here at High Street. I want to see everybody who comes into High Street start to learn to walk in the authority that God has given them. Authority to not fall into the gullible nature of what is being pushed at you from the, from the television. Maybe we should, you know, we, we used to have a time on High Street. High Street community would encourage people to fast from TV. I know you think, think that that's crazy. But we used to fast from TV. We used to have a period where there was no TV. Amen. Yeah, it was silent and quiet. At God, people like, no TV, no Netflix. 
No hulu. Yeah. They put some crap on TV. Oh. Every now and then I, I just get up and I go and I do something else. Go and read the scripture, go and look at my email, go and do something else. Because one after the next, after the next, and, and since they're pushing such nonsense upon us, because every TV now, even the kids' shows, it is okay for male and male to be together, female and female to be together. And you can't stop your children from seeing it because it's in everything. It's in the news. Uh, if they're watching a children's show, the commercials that come on the show, you can't totally block them out. But all I want to encourage you, saints, is have the view of the Holy Spirit in you. We we gotta get we gotta get away from this stuff that that, that the world is in. The Bible says, "Yeah, you are in the world, but you should not be of the world." We gotta stop this worldly thing. This this idea that, that we just got to do it because it's there. Freedom is ours. Deliverance is ours. Healing is ours. The Bible says by his stripes that he bore on the cross for us, we are healed. In a few moments, we're going to observe what we call the Holy Communion. It's a, it's a time where we say, remember Jesus. Remember all that he did. Remember that our iniquities were upon him. Remember that our sin was all cast on him. Remember that he who knew no sin took on all of our sins so that we now have free from death and we can go from life on earth to life in glory. Because of Jesus who paid it all. Who paid that price? I'm telling you. Whose blood is now sprinkled on all of us, on the altar for all of us, so that we are now saved and we are becoming ears and joint ears with Jesus Himself. And we have the authority, therefore, to not fall into sin. And we have the authority to speak to the world and not fall for the world. I, I, I hope that today that you are ready. For the miracles that God is doing at High Street and will continue to do. We hear testimonies of how the Lord is helping sisters to get their houses fixed and all that stuff. That's, that's the Lord doing yes. on your behalf. The Lord isn't just doing it for one, He'll do it for everybody according to your need and according to His riches and glory. But we gotta believe, we gotta give Him our all. We got to give up some of the stuff that we are holding on to. We have to let go of, of, of life. God said, if you don't, if you're not willing to lose it, then I can't give it to you all. God's got this system where you got to give it up to get it back. But if you understand the system of God, is that when you give up something, you don't really lose anything because God gives it back to you 30, 60, and 100 fold. You can afford to give up something for the Lord today. And my question is, are you ready and willing to give it all for Jesus? He gave it all for you. Are you ready to give it all for him? And are you willing to share it with others? So as I close today, I want to test that deliverance is yours today through the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I have a feeling that today there are people here in this place who need deliverance. So as Paul said, this is not in the same context, but Paul said, just get up to your feet and walk. I want you to get up from where you are today and walk to this altar. Because right here is the altar of deliverance. Right here is the place where you get freedom, where you get set free from all the thorns. And I don't know what you have come in with. You may have struggled to get here today because there was some bondage holding you back. I'm not calling it sin because everybody was looking at you and saying, well, I wonder what sin you did. It's not sin. It's a bondage. It's something that's holding you from all that God has for the glory that, that will be his. 
Is there anyone today who has heard this word, who knows that you are struggling with something and you're willing to come and stand at this altar? Come, let us pray with you. Because we want, I don't want you to come here with a bondage and leave here with a bondage. It's almost a waste of time coming here if you're going to take it back with you. Leave it here. Leave it here. This is where God will meet you. God will bless you. God will heal you. He will deliver you. Thank you, sister, for coming because you, you heard that, that there's a man called Jesus. You heard that there's a freedom that is here for you, and you're saying, I want to leave it right here at the altar. I want to give it up. Saints, we got to let it go. I, 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 I am just joined a, 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 a group that is for mostly for pastors and, and mostly for pastors. And I just learned something that's so alarming. I hate to repeat it, but, but I have to. Thirty-some percent of all pastors are struggling with remaining pastors. In other words, over thirty percent of all pastors are thinking about quitting. Thirty-some percent. That's a whole lot of pastors. And this is all, not just Church of God, this is all pastors. They're quitting. They're getting burned out. You know, you know they're getting burned out, sis, because you are the fire that's burning you. We, we know that. And they, you know, you know. Everybody wants the pastor to be their pastor, which is fine. So this group is to help pastors to come to a knowledge that you can't always be pouring out. You gotta find a way to get some back in. And, and, and so it's a group to support pastors because pastors are the last to get into a support group because we figured, no, you can't be in a support group. You can't let the church know that you're in a group that helps you to survive when you get up there preaching. So the church gotta think that you got it all together. And you can, and you should, but we're human. We're human first. And I have, I, I'm not struggling, but I decided, you know what? Let me lead pastors. I'm responsible for 20 some churches in this district. Let me be the, the leader to let these pastors know we can be in a group that will help to support us. What's the worst that can happen to me? I can be a better person after all. Hallelujah. I can be a better husband after all. My wife says, glory to God. <laughs> you know, I can be a better parent and hopefully grandparent. Not yet to Michael, but hopefully grandparent. You know how it is. I want to be a better person. Too many of us are in silence mm -hmm. because we don't want to acknowledge that we need help. Here is where it is. Come, let us pray with you. I always tell people, oh, I usually don't pray for you. I pray with you. I want to pray with you. You are praying and I am praying with you. You don't have to tell me. You don't have to reveal what your bondage is, what you're suffering with, what you're asking God for. You come here, you ask him for it. I'm praying with you for your deliverance. I'm praying with you for your healing. I'm praying with you for your blessing. Don't, don't, don't take it back home. Don't, don't take it home. You, you got up and you worked hard to get here today. Yes. So here is where you belong. And here is where we want to give you the victory. We preach it and we teach it and we tell you all that stuff. But if you just go back and say, oh, that was a good service today. Oh, and I especially like this, and especially like that. But were you blessed? Were you done? Did you get what you needed. This is where you can. Too many marriages are suffering because we don't want anybody to know that we are suffering. And so we can, we hold on to it. But I'm saying, come, let us free you from that bondage. 
Don't let the enemy have a hold upon you. Because he wants to keep you quiet because the more he keeps you quiet, the more he, you are listening to him. And the less you're hearing the Holy Spirit that's saying, no, I've given you life. I've given you abundance of life. I've given you freedom. I'm going to come around. I'm going to anoint you. And I'm going to pray with you. And I want you right now Unless the Lord tells you to shout it out, to quietly reveal to the Lord what you are standing in need of. As I come around, you are revealing it. You're not saying it to me. You're just revealing it. Keep speaking it to the Lord. You can speak, speak it out softly because I'm telling you, it needs to leave your lips. And I don't want you to speak it internally only. I want it to come out. But as I anoint you, I want you to know that the Lord has already touched you. Faith. First thing is you the enemy. Okay. Not in your business what anybody here is standing for. But when the enemy is trying to bring you to your head, what you think that they are here for, even if you're right, you're wrong. Sir. Even if you know it, don't let it come into your head. You're praying for each person who's standing here. You're praying for deliverance. The enemy is wanting to search every one of them like wheat. But the Lord has said that when I pray that when the enemy comes upon you, that the power of the Holy Spirit stands strong in you. I'm praying that, that, that as, as you face these challenges, that you would call on the name of Jesus. That you will know that Jesus is the answer. That, that you have the authority to speak and call it today what it ought to be. Father, we thank you today. We praise your name, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. We thank you, O Lord, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the day. You are God. You are Jehovah Rock. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Sitkanu. Lord, you are our righteousness. You are our peace, Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord. You are our banner, Jehovah Nisi. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Lord, we call on heaven right now. And you said that we can call on heaven and you will see to it that heaven becomes on earth as it is in heaven. So, Lord, give to these who are standing here the victory that they are here for today, Lord. Give them deliverance from the bondage of the plan to interrupt what you have for them. Give them freedom that they can walk in the liberty with which you have set them free. And that they will know that who the Son has set free is free indeed. Oh Lord, we pray for salvation. We pray for blessings. We pray for healing. We pray for uh, all sorts of victory, Lord, to come right now. Come, Jesus, come, Lord, among us. Lord, we thank you and praise you because you're worthy to be praised. Lord, we pray for a glorious outpouring of your spirit so that everyone who's standing here will have the power to go out and 
to say to, to the world, be gone. To say to the things that the world bring up that no, you have no place here. To be wearing the gospel of the preparation of truth, Lord. That they will be praying, that they will have the right helmet on, that they will have the shield of faith, Lord. That they will have the loins girded, Lord, with truth. Oh, Lord, that they will have the breastplate of righteousness upon them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the full armor that you have given us and help us to wear it. And then at the end, we can stand in the liberty. We can stand in the freedom. We can stand in the knowledge. We can stand in the victory. We can stand, Lord, because you've given us that power and authority. Sin has no more dominion upon us. Lord, we give you praise. We glorify your name. You are worthy to be praised, Lord. And anyone who is among us that needs healing, we bring healing. We said, Lord, that we can call on the saints and the anointed of, of, of oil and, and that we can bring salvation to others, Lord. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, and we give you victory and glory. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 We glorify your name, Lord. We We thank you, Jesus. Walk in it. Walk in that liberty. Walk in that authority. Walk in that knowledge. Amen. Amen. We're going to transition right into our time of fellowship. We ask the deacons to come and prepare the table. We thank all of our deacons for the diligence in making sure that that we have the elements and that the dressing of the table is white and the altar is prepared. And we praise you for all the work you do. And now it's time for us to be obedient to the Lord, as he said, to remember him. The word of God said in, in uh, the book of Corinthians, let a man examine himself. Let everyone examine yourself. Have an examine yourself if you find that you are worthy, not that you are perfect, but that you are worthy. Because the blood of the Lord has made you worthy. If you're worthy, we want you to leave from your seat and come right up right now. We, we, because of our COVID protocol, we have for you um, cups as you face the table, cups on your right that have the element that represents the body of the Lord. And as you face the table, cups on the left that represent the blood of the Lord. You're going to come, you're going to take, and you're going to go back to your seats with your two cups. So just come from where you are and take it and go back to your seat. But as you come and as you receive, you're receiving the gift of life. You're receiving salvation, but you're also receiving the ability to live, to, to be sustained through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're going to take a few minutes when you go back to peel away the, the cup with the juice so that you can have it clearly ready for you and we give you the, the authority to, to take and eat and drink. But Take it, then you can go to your seat and, and, and have a time to, to peel away. So don't don't participate yet. But only take from the table. But this is for those who have been washed for the blood of the Lamb, those who are saved, those who know the Lord as their Savior, those who examine themselves in the Holy Spirit, says, I have covered you. 
I've covered you with the authority now that you have to walk as free people, to walk in the salvation that I've born for you on Catholic. Praise the Lord. It's because of the blood of the Lamb that we now have righteousness imputed to us. We have freedom that is ours. We have victory that is ours. We have salvation that is ours. We have healing that is ours. Amen. I want to make sure that everyone has. Praise the Lord. Now that you have the elements again. The wafer that you have represents the body of Christ. He suffered. Today. Not only did he suffer emotionally, people calling him names, jeering him, telling him, see yourself, come down from the cross as you think you are who you are. But he also suffered. There was a crown of thorns that was planted and pushed into the he was whipped and beaten and bruised. I thank God, even those stripes, there's some good that came out of it because they brought healing for us. So if you believe in Jesus, and if you believe that he bore your sins on Calvary, then eat in remembrance of him. The Bible gives us a story that on that night that he broke bread, then at the end of supper, he took the cup. And they already understood this cup to represent the blood of Emmanuel's vein or the blood of Elijah. But he said, let me give you a new covenant. That old covenant that you're here to participate in ends tonight. Because it can only bring you to a knowledge of who Christ is. But this new covenant takes you past that. Takes you into a time where my blood will atone for all of your sins. Past, present, and future. If you believe that your sins are totally 100% forgiven, then drink as unto the Lord. Amen. And if you really believe this, then praise the Lord for who what is that? Because this is not just this is not just a wafer and some juice that we're drinking. This is the victory that we have. Yes. This is victory over sin, victory over sickness and illness, victory over pain, victory over all sorts of sufferings that we will have. But Lord, the Lord says, He bore the iniquities for us all, and by the chastisement, His peace is upon us. Can you imagine that? We get peace. We get victory, we get blessing, we get atonement, we get salvation. We now are free to walk in the authority that God has given us. And now we are free to share this with others. So as you, we thank the, the deacons and ushers for collecting our cups. We thank you, O Lord, for all that you've given to us, for all you've done for us. We praise you. Thank 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 you.
Thank the Lord for our faithful deacon. They even protect the wife and the purity of their cloth. Mm. They take your job seriously. Praise the Lord. While the blood washes white as snow. Amen. So we have the symbol today of the whiteness of the purity that comes through, through the blood of Christ. Yes, sir. We used to sing a song in the choir now, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. So we know that though your sins be scarlet, they shall be as Praise the Lord. Father, we now come to you. And we give you all the praise and glory. We thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. You are worthy of all of our praise. So now to you, we are able to keep us all this. Um, present us all this before the very presence of your throne with a seated great joy. For the only wise God, the all majesty, dominion, and power, now and forevermore, and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.